All right. What's up, everybody? Good morning. Good afternoon. By the time this comes out, it will be the afternoon. This is going to be a little different. Um, I'm really excited. I really feel this is the best I've felt in a long time. So I got Glenn with me before I start rambling here. This is Glenn is here. First of all, I coached Glenn for four years um, at high in high school. Glenn, you're a senior now in college. Is that correct? You're about to graduate. So I've coached Glenn. I was the JV basketball coach when Glenn tried out for um, basketball. He made the team. And then I was the varsity coach, uh, Glenn's 10th, 11th, and 12th grade team. So then Glenn made the JV team his 10th grade. And then I got to coach him again, 11th and 12th grade. And he is here for two reasons. The first reason is we're going to talk basketball. And I couldn't think of a better person to help me break down these games. All these guys are your age. This is your wheelhouse. So I'm excited to do that. And we'll do that in a second. But the second reason is uh, to keep me focused because I promised myself and frankly, I promised you guys when I sent the email out the past couple of days, I am going to be positive. I'm going to take the high road because if I don't, I, I only know one other way to act. So I got to completely take the high road. Um, I explained some things through the messages or through the emails. I've talked to a bunch of people. If things aren't clear, you ask me, I'm happy to talk about things but I'm not into the he said, she said. The one thing that I want to address um, on camera, and then we're gonna go to basketball, is nobody stole anything from anybody. I've 100% owned this company. It's my idea, it's my company. Not, like I said, not he said, she said, legally. Always has been, always will be. Uh, Jeremy was paid as a 1099 independent contractor. Um, I don't wanna characterize his role because I wish he was still here. And frankly, maybe at some point, um, depending on how he wants to proceed, maybe there's ways to move. I don't like burning bridges. Things happen. It's a difficult time. However, what I want to explain to you guys and why I think Glenn's the perfect person is we got to provide helpful sports betting advice. And I'm a big believer that you have to have discipline and you can't just bet 10, 11 games a day. And you have to have a, a budget. And there's just a lot of things that I needed to fundamentally change. And let's just say he wasn't ready to do that. And that's okay. Um, but with that being said, if, if anybody wants to talk about anything more specific, I prefer you message me and we can set up a phone call. Um, as far as everybody's subscription, as far as the price, nothing's going to change. Uh, like I said, I was not planning this. So I'm in the process of figuring out what we're going to do moving forward. And that's why Glenn's here because Glenn is... I mean, look, I'm going to probably make Glenn blush for a second, but I don't care. He is as reliable as a kid as you can find, always on time, always good grades, always knew the plays, always a good teammate, and just always in the right place at the right time. Uh, I don't know if we had to compare your game. I guess you're a one slash two. Do we have a favorite player that you like to pretend that you're just as good at? <laughs> um, I'm not sure. Someone who shoots well. <laughs> right. I'll say Glenn. So Glenn figured out. I talked to him after sophomore year. I said, if you want to make the team, you got to be able to shoot the rock um, because your limited uh, God given abilities as far as jumping and your speed. And just like the rest of us, um, you got to find a way to get yourself open. And if you get open, uh, you got to knock it down. So Glenn had, man, had a great senior year, I guess the highlight, and then uh, we'll move on and talk basketball. But what did you have? Don't don't let me undershoot it. Was it 30 plus in one of those games? Yeah, like 20, 30, 30. Just say my ass. We're now 20 in the second half. I, I give a halftime speech that is very uninspiring. Cause I'm like, what the fuck are you guys doing? Like this is <laughs> like, what are we doing? Glenn, it's his senior year, and he's just he was actually angry. He's like, You're right. Like, what what, what are we doing? And um, anyway, snapped out of it, scored. Let me say 33 points. We win the game. So yeah. a lot of great memories and Glenn's never been on camera. So we're just going to roll. We're going to talk hoops. I told him to pretend like nobody's listening and we disagree on the first game. So that's fantastic. I have North Carolina right. winning. Uh, so let's see that my favorite bet right now going into the sweet 16 is Carolina at plus 160 is what I got it to win the West. So I don't okay. love giving four and a half points tonight, and I don't love minus 180, 185 for them to win the money line, but I love the way they match up against um, Arizona, assuming they win, and obviously if Clemson wins, then I can hedge my bet and take Clemson on the money line. So I feel great about that spot. 
But let's talk about the game tonight because my takeaway was Grand Canyon should have won that game, but they just can't make free throws. You know how I feel. Yeah. Glenn, by the way, shoots the free throws if we get the technical. So go ahead. <laughs> Why do you think Alabama is – because I think Carolina beats them. Do you think – what am I missing here? What do you think about this uh, matchup tonight? Well, I, I love that they play fast, and their point guard, a guy named Mark Sears, he can really shoot. He just kind of reminds me of like a Jalen Brunson type player. Um, lefty, right? And, like light skin lefty. Yeah, the lefty. Um, and yeah, they play really fast. They average the most points per game in the country. And I think they match up better against UNC than maybe some other teams do, especially UNC probably matches up better against most of the teams in the tournament. But I think if Alabama can get out ahead and uh, play fast and hit a lot of threes, they have a chance. So do you feel like if Alabama had the lead that Michigan State had, that would put just too much? Like, because I think yeah, what you're saying is the takeaway from that Michigan State game is just Michigan State had two. They just stopped scoring. Like they were up 26 right. 15, right? And that just right. happened with Alabama. Yeah, I don't I don't see that happening if Alabama gets up early. And I think it's a good possibility just because they love to shoot threes. Um, so I'll be looking if those are falling early, it might be a long night. What about the big guy though? Like they the Bay Cat night. How does Alabama what I took away from the Grand Canyon game is man, Grand Canyon is more physical than Alabama. With Ingram and Baycott, how do you right. know, how does Alabama defend that? Right. That'll be the biggest challenge, I think, is defending Baycott. Um, and he's also a good passer when they double team him down low. So it'll it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. But yeah, that's definitely their biggest challenge. Do you think Alabama wins? I know, and for the record, Glenn's not a big gambler. Like obviously you got the bracket and you know the spread. Yeah. Pay attention. You were telling me before we started that. And this is like typical of you, of course. Like your friends will be gambling and doing the right, right. team parlays, but uh, that's not your style. What is the largest bet you've you've made? If you don't mind me asking, um, I bet I placed a bet on the Super Bowl for like fifty dollars or something, and that was like one of the only times I've bet. But um, <laughs> all right, so give me back to this because yeah. I, look, I don't need you to be shy here. You got to talk me out of it because I'm actually putting money here on North Carolina to win the West. Do you think Alabama okay. wins the game tonight or do you think it's just really tight? And how, like, I need you to walk me through exactly how this game ends if North Carolina is not winning because I just can't see it. No matter how I look at it, I just feel like Carolina wins this game. So go ahead, push it hard. I, know I would say the thing that convinced me the most is watching um, Alabama's point guard, Mark Sears, the last two games. I mean, he's been incredible. He's a great passer and he can – shoot off the dribble and so he basically orchestrates everything for their offense and um i don't you were you watched that grand canyon game you said it was kind of a slug fest people were all over the floor and so if something like that ends up happening i could see alabama pulling away and honestly i do i do think they'll win um maybe that's just me being optimistic but we'll see are you anti-UNC or is it? More I'm kind of, well, I, I did pick Alabama to go to the final four in my bracket. So that's kind of where I'm coming from. But, but I'm I, thinking I, think they good, I think they have a good chance. I think they'll cover. Okay. But even like all season, when you just looked at this Carolina team, do you think, is it more of a, because you said they match up pretty well with most teams. Is it just yeah. because Alabama basically plays so fast and Carolina likes to play? Pretty much. Okay. Pretty much. They're both good shooting teams. I think I like that Alabama plays a little faster, and I think that'll definitely benefit them if they um, can get a lead at some point. Well, we'll come back to that at the very end because there's a couple other things I wanted to touch on, but I want to make sure we get to all the games, and Glenn is sure. into his schedule, so I'm not going to keep him forever. But let's get to the next one because um, this, okay. this is the one game that I I feel like can go in two different directions. Um, in either direction it goes, I think there will be – it'll go over the total. So in the Arizona-Clemson game, the total is 152.5 points. And it's a lot of okay. points, and Clemson has gone under it twice um, and gotten burned burn people twice. Like that New Mexico-Clemson game was supposed to go over because uh, New Mexico right. was supposed to score, and they didn't. And then Baylor got shut down. My thought yeah. process is – and I want to I want to get your take on it is Arizona can either score 90 95 points and that'll push the game over um yeah. or if the game is tight I believe that just the free throws at the end of the game we get into the 80s with both teams what I'd like to ask you is your take on that slash what do you think of this Arizona team let's start with them 
Um, go ahead. Um, I think the thing that jumps out to me about them is they're really athletic. Um, I got to see Caleb Love play in person of two years ago when he was playing for UNC, and he's like a big dude. Um, also, their center, um, that huge guy, the seven footer, um, I think he'll be a presence. And I like the over, honestly, if I had to guess. But it really depends on how well Clemson's shooting the ball, I would say. So, if the, right, I would say, is there a situation where the game looks similar to Dayton, where it's like an 83-64 game? Like, do you yeah. think it's more of a chance that Arizona blows them out or that Clemson pulls off a miracle? Or I don't know if it's a miracle, but pulls off the upset. I think there's probably more of a chance that Arizona blows them out, honestly. I could just see them. They're so much more athletic. Um, I think Clemson will really have to hit a lot of shots this game to stay competitive. Yeah, how does Gerard? Where, where are you at with him? It feels like he's been around. He's a, he's a good player. I like the way he plays. Um, and he's been shooting the ball better in the tournament, so he's gonna have to keep that up. But yeah, I like the way he plays a lot. I would say that my my overall take on this game going over is from a gambling standpoint. And this is just like an old rule that I've always had. If you're gonna bet the over, if you like the over in a game. Um, either accept the fact that you were right and you didn't make any money or live bet it after the first five or six minutes. Because if you're right about the game and like there's so many of these games, especially tonight, guys are nervous. I mean, obviously, Glenn, you can speak to that. Like the nerves yeah. will just be flowing. So yeah. if you have like an over at 152 and a half and then the way the timeouts work for college basketball is it's the first whistle under 16, first whistle under 12, under eight, and then under four are the TV timeouts. If you have a situation where there's 14 minutes and 39 seconds left, and it's like, is Arizona losing five to three? And it's like, wow, that 152 and a half is now 143 and a half. And yeah. that's like a whole gigantic difference. And really the first three minutes, you can almost expect Arizona to miss some shots. Now, if you're wrong and Arizona comes out and makes a bunch of threes or Clemson's up 11 to five, and now the number's, 163 then basically you say to yourself son of a bitch i should have bet it but at least i didn't lose anything so i think that would be my advice with this particular game i like the over but if you're listening to the podcast um wait and kind of hope that maybe teams start off a little slow and then you can get better value let's go to the third game because the fourth game is gonna be my favorite that's why i saved it but the third game i'm not betting because i refuse to bet when i'm wrong when i am not on the train and this Connecticut train, I haven't jumped on it, meaning I have yet to make any money with Connecticut. So as soon as I bet Connecticut, they'll win by two tonight. Um, so I'm just not doing it. And I also, my biggest analysis of Connecticut is there, and I heard somebody say this, it was a coach was breaking down Connecticut and said, they're much easier to prepare for tonight than they would be on the second game of a weekend because most teams are doing ball screen offense. And Glenn, we've a... Uh, we had our fair share of interesting point guards during our time. So we yeah. kind of moved away from that, um, yeah. despite some pushback that I got. But anyway, um, most teams run the ball screen. We call it the James Harden, the Luka Doncic, where we're just going to do a high pick and roll. And uh, it's very simple basketball. But Connecticut won't do that. Connecticut is really old school with their cuts. They remind me a lot of how Gary Williams used to coach, flares and curls and all kinds of jazz. So I say that to say that when you play them with only one day to prepare, um, really tough. So if Connecticut, I would lean towards them struggling early with San Diego State, but I am not putting a freaking dollar against Connecticut. I can't do it. Um, yep. But I would say, yeah, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't, I don't even want to say not to bet Connecticut because I feel like they're, I don't even know. Go ahead. I have a hard time with this game in case you can't. I, I would have a hard time betting against Connecticut too. I think every time I've watched them, they're they can snap out of a rut like that. And their offense is so well run and it doesn't depend on just one player. Right. That's um, what I was alluding to. Like the way they run their offense right. is like interchangeable, not I mean and Newton, if he wants to, is what yeah. oh yeah. He's a he's a great player. And their center, uh Klingon, he's amazing too. Um also, San Diego. Go ahead, it, it'll be hard for them to score in the paint against him, I would think. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. So San Diego State, obviously, it's a rematch of last year um, in the championship where San Diego State, I think they hung around for a little bit and then not so much and then it turned into a blowout. 
Look, yeah. um, San Diego State, give me – what's their pathway? How about that? So San Diego State wins tonight. What would the score look like? How do they pull it off? I think maybe in the 70s. I don't think they can get up above 80 and still win this game, honestly. Um, they were a good defensive team last year, and that's what brought them to the championship, and I think that's probably what they'll have to do again if they want to make it, especially past this round. 137 and a half suggests that – they won't get to the 70s. They don't yeah, it might, might be even lower than that, yeah. Do you favor one way or the other? Like, do you think the pace of play, if you put your coaching hat on, if you were coaching San Diego State, um, what what do you think would be the message tonight? Like, how how do we beat UConn? What do we need to focus on? Kind of get get me into the weeds of if they're going to pull it off, what, what would that look like? I think they need to shoot the three well, and I think – they need to get something going in the paint however they can against that seven-footer. Get that guy in foul uh, trouble, get him out of the game? Yeah, maybe. I But especially I would say shooting the deep ball well would really help them because I don't know how much success they're going to have driving against uh, the big guy in the paint. What about the psychology of just having staying so close that if there's seven or eight minutes left? Because Connecticut hasn't had – they ran through everybody last year. Right. You know, they haven't felt pressure in a long time. My thought would be I want to see what happens if San Diego State's tied with seven, eight minutes left. And see yeah, how to get, what's their play down the stretch? Where it would exactly do they do? I think if they could get to that point, it would benefit them because they are a good defensive team and um, they could lock in for those last five minutes or so and really make a run. Um, it'll be interesting to see. I think this will probably be one of the best games to, tonight. Yeah. Um, well, I think the best game is going to be Illinois and Iowa State. It is like the polar opposite of teams. Illinois is going to run, run, run. They score the most points, and Iowa State right. is going to slow it down. And, yeah. You know, um, from the way that we like to play is if you can get early offense, great. That's fantastic. So let's not – pretend like Iowa state is literally going to walk the ball up the court. Like if they can run, they're going to run too. So when I looked yeah. at the number, I'm like 145 and a half, I think it was 146 when it first came out. I was like, that's a little high for Iowa state, but I also feel like, and then, so anyway, so I dug more into it and cause my instincts just with Iowa state is to bet unders. Right. And look, it's right. calculated for that, but still, I love their coach. Um, but the more I dug into it, I'm like, I just think Iowa State's going to beat them, and they might be able to score 85, 90 points because Illinois gave up a whole bunch of points to Wisconsin and Nebraska in the Big Ten tournament. So I don't want to bet under tonight, and then Iowa State actually wins by 10 or 15 points and dominates them. Right. Um, instead, I I went with Iowa State on the, I think it was one and a half, so I just bought it down to one. Um, I suggest, by the way, if anybody's, you know, when you're betting on these games, there's no point to um, like pay the extra juice to make sure. Cause if you take Iowa state minus one and a half and you're right about the game and they're up by six, seven, eight points. And then at the end of the game, somehow Illinois makes a couple free throws and it's four points. And it's like, wait, is there three seconds left? And we're up by four and Illinois just made a three at the buzzer. And it's like, I could have just paid a little extra juice to make sure I couldn't lose. So right. I just want to pay the juice for Iowa state money line. Cause then the, it's like a fine line. Right. So I just did Iowa state minus one. So that way, okay. as long as they win, I can't lose. And this is my takeaway, and then I want your response to it. The team defense, so Illinois plays, they got great talent. Like, they, they're two guys, um, Shannon and, uh, how do you say the other guy's name? Dumbosk, uh, the way. Yeah, right? I something Marcus like that. Marcus is his first name. I know his first name is Marcus. But him yep. and uh, Shannon, the lefty, they are NBA players. They're explosive. They're great players. However, yeah. Iowa State – like, if this was just a pickup game and you were drafting the players, Illinois would get more players drafted. Um, right. The big guy in Illinois, um, the tall, lanky guy, uh, that'll get me in a second. But I think his problem tonight, and what I wrote in the analysis, it's Coleman or something, but he mm -hmm. he is not going to be able to defend Iowa State when Iowa State runs their pick and roll. And right. Illinois' offense relies on being – athletic and explosive and we got these one-on-one -on -one players but iowa state plays a team defense it's like really hard for me to describe without sounding like super nerdy and getting out the film and like stopping it because i'm yeah. like studying what they're doing and it's like the positioning of the off ball players and then the way that they recover so i just feel like illinois is going to struggle tonight to get good shots and it was so much easier 
in their first two games that all of a sudden what I wrote in the little write-up is it's going to feel like there's six players out there. You know how the Ravens yeah. defense felt like there's 13 guys out there sometimes? Yeah. That's how Iowa State feels. If I'm missing something, please, now would be a really good time because I have bet significant money here on Iowa State. Okay, I completely agree, honestly. Um, I like the way Iowa State plays. I watched the Big Ten Championship a couple weeks ago, and um, they just Big ran – the Big Or 12. Big 12, uh, sorry. It's okay. And they just ran their way through that tournament. Um, yeah, they look good. Like you said, they don't have, like, one guy who's going to score all their points, but they uh, play as a team on both sides, I would say. What is your take on Illinois' best players? Like, are you – is there a pathway for them to win tonight? Can Shank is, look, he can score 35, 40 points against other teams, but no yeah. one does that. The way they suffocated Houston, yeah. And people kind of, well, Houston maybe didn't care. That's fine. But they also beat them earlier in the season, too. And right. to me, Illinois is kind of a worse version of the way, like, and that's my take is I can look at the way Illinois plays. It's like a lot of one on one ball, a lot of yeah. high pick and rolls. And that's exactly what Iowa State. Iowa State might struggle against Connecticut in the next matchup with yeah. all the dynamics that Connecticut can do the off the ball. But if you keep pounding that ball against Iowa State, the way Illinois likes to dribble, 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 dribble. I, look, you yeah. don't disagree with me, so I don't need you to. No, keep I, I completely agree with all your points there. So. Um, yeah. Well, good. That's why you got paid the big bucks to be here. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Hold on. I got to find. Right, so first of all, it's Domask and Coleman Hawkins. Uh, okay. The big guy. So that's what my main take for the game is. I think Iowa State's defense beats Illinois' offense, but not right. dramatically, but I think it beats it. It gets the edge. So then you got to okay. go to the other side. And Iowa State is not explosive, but they're efficient. And Illinois, I think, really lacks defensively. And the big guy that I was just referring to, Coleman, is a solid offensive player. But their style is he just stays. You basically think of him as like a poor man's Rudy Gobert. So he yeah. can't guard the pick and roll. He kind of just stays there and in the middle as like a helpless duck. And then he's not the most physical guy. So I think Iowa State will beat him up on the boards. That's my favorite game. I have a bet for Iowa State to win the whole um, tournament. So my goal okay. is to be able to hedge a little bit with Connecticut. Well, preferably if San Diego State just beat Connecticut. Um, yeah. In, one one thing I will say is uh, Iowa State does remind me of Connecticut a little bit, and just in terms stylistically. Um, so I could that would be an interesting matchup if we get those two teams playing each other at some I point. Think, I think we do. So all right. So we agree. I, the reason I wanted to circle back to North Carolina is because I loved Iowa State. If you disagreed on it, then mm -hmm. we could spend more time. But look, I like Iowa State. That's – I'm on the record. Um, beat a dead horse. Let's go back to the Carolina game because there was something that you said that made me, you know, want to double-check on something here. Okay. Um, Carolina against Michigan. Did you watch the Carolina-Michigan State game? Yeah, I watched, I watched the majority of it. What the hell do you think Carolina's strategy against – okay, so Carolina's strategy against Michigan State – it, and I think the reason why they ultimately they just run, 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 no matter what, we miss shots, yeah. keep going. Against Alabama, that's what Alabama wants them to do. So right. I right. feel as the head coach, I got to make like these really tough decisions because I don't want to tell my team, hey, let's do just because the other team might be a little better at that. But then at the same time, I got the big guy. So yeah. put yourself in the put yourself in Carolina's guards position. Cause that would, in your hypothetical fantasy life, you're the point guard shooting guard on North Carolina. Yeah. Are you frustrated. How do you think they would react if coach is like, listen, this game, I know this is what we've done pretty much the whole season, but we got to just slow it down a little bit today and go inside the bay cut. Does that make you feel less confident? Is that part of the reason why you like Alabama? Cause you think Carolina's going to be a little confused on how they want. Yeah. To there's some of that. I think, they're still going to have to play fast, certainly, because Alabama just will push the tempo. But they're going to have to get the ball inside, and so that's going to require slowing it down somewhat. Um, but, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what they do. They do have good guard play with R.J. Davis, so um, oh. they can really do either. But I wouldn't expect them to play into Alabama's hand and just push the pace constantly. I think because Baycott's the senior – it's easier for him to tell everybody the ball's got to come to me. Whereas right. if he was, uh, you know, a younger guy, it would be hard to switch the style. But I think, look, in this particular game, throw the ball to me. 
Whereas if Arizona wins, you want to play the opposite next week because then Arizona, right. not the big guy, Ballo or however you say his name, yeah. um, that, that might be a situation where Baycott doesn't have as many points. Um, so, all right, Glenn, this was great. I think I kept you. Yep. No, I did good. Kept you where I need to keep you. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, really appreciate it. You kept me on track and I am going to end this peacefully. Um, okay. We can move on. Uh, okay. I wish everybody good luck today. What I will do is I'll definitely be back tomorrow. Everything's uh, kind of fluid right this second as far as guests um, and exactly the plan. But before I go, I do want to um, touch on baseball, make sure I'm being clear because I wrote it in the write-up, but just so everybody can hear me, I am not betting baseball every day, let alone three, four days a week. Like that is not what I'm doing. And I'm not going to give out picks if I'm not betting on the game um, because I don't feel like it's as valuable. I can certainly give my opinions, but I'm in the process of bringing on a couple of people who do bet baseball very often, um, who have a disciplined way of doing it. But I don't want to just bring somebody on right away. So I have to you know, make sure it's the right person and make sure that they're going to actually help you guys. But today's opening day, and I feel like um, it's almost uh, – anti-american and not that on opening day baseball so my three games i'll just go through it real quick and then yeah if i love something for baseball because i follow it every day i'll certainly bet and i gotta talk to myself but i'm thinking 500 to my max bet on a baseball game and a hundred dollars is a minimum bet and i really don't want to bet very often there might be a week or two that goes by and i don't bet a game because um and even as i'm saying it out loud I might just pick a flat number and say I'm betting 200 on each game um, because I don't, I truly think you have to watch these games in order to be able to have a solid opinion. And I have just way too much to do to follow everything every day in order to feel comfortable. So if something pops out or there's a pitcher that I think is in a great spot, but with that being said, it is opening day. The two bets that I like are the Red Sox and the Mariners. They go under five, um, excuse me, under four runs in the first five innings. Um, just a rule of thumb, if you like the starting pitchers, you make sure to bet the first five innings. If you're handicapping the bullpen, and that's part of the analysis, and that's great, but you can bet the first five innings. So there's no point to do more work if you don't have to. Uh, Castillo and Bello for you know the Mariners and Red Sox, Obviously, they're great pitchers. I just think the game goes under, right? Not too much else with that. And the Rockies and Diamondbacks, pretty much the opposite. I got the over eight and a half. I think the Rockies can score four or five runs tonight. Um, and I expect the Diamondbacks to do the same easily. So those would be the two games that jumped out at me. And then I had to make a bet on the Orioles, and I refused to do minus one and a half because that means somehow the Orioles win today and I lose. So that's not happening. Um <laughs> I started thinking about it. Uh, obviously, Glenn, you love the Orioles. I, I thought the crowd to be so loud on every strike that I just took under three and a half runs for the Angels and felt okay. like, I don't know if we're going to win two to nothing or 10 to two, but they're not going to score. Like, they, I feel like the energy. Yeah, is they're, we're at home today, I'm assuming. Yeah. I was just saying, okay. oh, I didn't even say, Glenn, you're down in uh, Charleston, right? So you'll Yeah, I am. Um, yeah. My sister's actually going to the O's game today, though, so. She'll be there to root them on. Awesome. Well, listen, man, thank you for doing this. And yep. thank you guys for being patient and listening. And as I said in the beginning, if there's any questions, just just email me, message me. But there will be no social media nonsense on my end. That's not what I'm interested in doing. And Glenn kept me on the straight and narrow. So, Glenn, really appreciate you. Um, yep. Thanks for having me. Yeah. All right. Everybody. I'm great happy day. to come back anytime. Don't, don't say that because I'm going to sign you right this second. Okay. Right. <laughs> thank you. See you yep. guys.